um, Jesus recordings. That's for you to come. You only serve for that. Um, I, we've been, I've been in my position for about three years, but we've been capturing content for quite a while. Um, I do video production as well, bits as a graphic <coughs> for the college, and also e-learning um, content as well. Um, my line manager Simon is meant to be here today to go through the uh, presentation with me, but he's off with us at the moment. So um, yes, yeah, so it's just down to me today, and luckily it's been filmed, so he gets to see it later. Right, so a bit of background about us. Um, Expert, we've got 4,500 uh, full-time students, uh, 8,000 part-time. Uh, you know, we're 14 to 16. Uh, and in March 2012, uh, we had an unannounced uh, Ofsted inspection, and we got out outstanding. So. We began yeah, streaming in 2005 when we were using uh, streaming to real media. And we kind of like, uh, we why did we want to you know, sort of upgrade? You know, we had, we had 7,000 um, real uh, content, uh, real videos that we needed to put into whatever our new uh, sort of streaming video was going to be. Uh, the main sort of downside for us was we had the way it was displayed was kind of a major factor. We had um, the, the years divided up into months and we just had lists of l basically links to each video. And you know, it's not particularly user friendly. You know, for anyone to find anything, they had to kind of scroll through the list, scroll through the months maybe to try to find stuff. And it was just, you know, it was, it was awkward to use. And um, the HTML, it kind of allowed the users to generate their own content we had issues with sort of flip cameras because they become really popular with sort of staff and they, they were recording to HD. You know, we needed some sort of way to kind of control the size of it. And so, and also some of sort of um, the PCs weren't up to spec <coughs> to sort of display the, the footage. So we needed somewhere where they could upload their footage to that could kind of take care of all that. Um, we wanted, yeah, like I said, it was great, great functionality. We wanted to be able to um, sort of create chapters because when you've got a VHS tape for three hours, you, know, you don't have to scroll through all of it to try and find the bit you want. We need some sort of chapter, sort of thing. Yeah, again, you know, wanted you know, to be able to use on mobile devices, and we, like I said earlier, we wanted that better search functionality. Right. So as um, as we said, we uh, we branded our HTML replay. Uh, we started using it in September t in uh, 2011. Um, we've got, at the moment, we've got 35 ca categories and apps, TV and radio, uh, user up uploaded uh, content, and restrict like a restricted category as well. Um, our user access is through an ice box that pops up, which is the same as they want to log onto our portal, and um, that gives that gives them access to that as well. Right, so when we got the new HTML in place, um, we had 7,000 of, of our own real things, real media videos that we had to kind of transfer to our new system. And as I know someone was saying, you know, you've got 3,000 to sort of upload into the new system. The, the way we looked at it, we, we looked at all our videos, we put them into a folder, um, and then that might have been called, you know, art and design something, something we're going to use later on. I put all the videos for art and design into that one folder, and then we generated the XML and used the XML to pull the name of the file, uh, the name of the folder into each of the XML, so that gave us a category. We didn't have um, sort of other metadata, you know, it was just the name, but at least we had them had the name and a category it fit in, which kind of made the process a little bit easier for adding 7,000 videos into it. Um, so up to today, we've got over 3,000 videos um, in our HTML. That sets us over 10,000. I think we've got 10,100-ish videos, uh, audio clips in our in our video uh, library. On average, we do sort of five videos a day. Um, yeah, of the real real clips that got 
620 views, that's our most view clip. This little figure here, the 1,211, some students, some IT students, in fact, realise that if you click refresh on the video, it generates a, you know, a user sort of hit rate. So <coughs> they love to see their video on the top, most plays. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we had to kind of resolve that at a later point. Um, we also did when if when we uploaded um, like a C an audio CD, it might be sort of 30 tracks, and we kind of. It could be a bit, little bit awkward sometimes searching through the, the old method and sort of the old, the old uh, version of HTML. So we kind of gave it this sort of, like sort of almost like a unique sort of um, un unique sort of data uh, or tag. So when you s when you search say something like this, it'd bring up the whole CD in one sort of block because it made it sort of easy for staff to kind of get their head rounds and then they could just search for one thing and bring up the whole CD. And then, yeah, in September 2012, we got the um, on the server added, which was, you know, it's made my life a lot easier because before I, I'd been doing this manually, I'd record, you know, TV programs with our freeview box. And then when I first started, we were putting onto DVD and then putting through, running through a code and stuff like that. But this just is incredibly fast and it adds all that description and metadata. You know, it's, it's really good. Um, we had a few issues with our on the server box to start off with, but now it's all been resolved and it works really well and we're going to get sort of the learning assistance to kind of help us with that and set the recordings as well. So we've customised quite a few things in our in Reflay just to kind of make it, you know, specific to our users and kind of make it the way, the, the look and feel of how we'd want it to feel. So one of the sort of the main things for uh, sort of to coverage for the ERA, we add in an ERA license. So up there. So just we didn't want we didn't really want the embed code at the time because it wasn't generating stats for us. So we actually removed it totally. We kind of went behind the scenes and edited the CSS file, and we wanted the ERA sort of constantly there, and we didn't want to. You know, it's really nice having those thumbnails. You know, automatically generated and kind of. Why would we want to hide them for everyone? Because I can understand, you know, you've got to have the ERA license there somewhere, but the kind of thumbnail generation kind of makes it feel more personable and actually, you know, for users a bit more friendly. Um, so we, we also added a sort of category heading. So, you know, you've got, if it depends on how, how often you've used it, we've got these 35 categories. We've got, say, 10 or so, which are TV recordings, and then the bottom 25 are staff sort of generated ones and it wasn't particularly clear because it's just sort of uh, the grey sort of um, categories on the left uh, what, what's been generated by me or the t sort of TV off-air recordings and what's been generated by staff. So we've actually come sort of with a solution where we've added these sort of like really clear blue box you know, following the rest of the feel of, of replay that makes it so TV, TV radio, and then you've got this other one, which is the uploaded media, which just really makes it a lot clearer <coughs> for staff to find, you know, if it's something they've done or you know, something they've seen on TV recently. As with this one, uh, the most played um, clip, like I said, you know, with the students, you know, theirs was their top top video or anything they liked, having a top sort of um, top video there. We didn't that wasn't going to be useful for us. So rather than having it there and showing their video all the time, we decided to remove it completely. And which, you know, removes a little bit of the functionality from, from that home page. But actually it gives us a little bit of space to kind of almost like sort of internal advertising. You know, we can kind of say, you know, if you didn't know, you could actually view it, you know, on your iPad, you know, you can do that. So we can kind of put messages in, or you know, say, you know, there's these programs, you know, try clicking here. You know, just kind of give a bit more sort of user, um, kind of be more a bit of like a user guide almost for, for certain things. And then obviously with the new, with the update, we've got um, sort of links um, as well. We've kind of added again to sort of a category heading so it's nice and clear and big. You know, it's, it's something different. And also we've added sort of just to kind of make it a little bit shiny, I suppose, add these, I think they're called avacons. I, I don't know if that's the way to pronounce them, but something like that. 
but it just kind of makes it a little bit more colourful and you know, for our students to use, it kind of makes it a bit clearer. You know, for us, um, sort of HTML, it's been, you know, it's been really successful in, you know, it's used, you know, obviously daily in our college, you know, it's been, we showed it, our Ofsted, Ofsted came into us and was like, how do you sort of cope with video demand? We actually showed them Refay and they're, you know, really impressed by that. <coughs> um, yeah, when we had sort of the old real player installed on all our machines, it kind of, We'd occasionally have errors and stuff, whereas uh, the HTML replay, because um, it's all you know web-based, you know we don't have those errors, um, or very rarely have any errors that come come up now. So it's like a lot clearer. You know you don't have to install any bits of software, uh, which was kind of a bit of a negative from from the old server. Um, and our development, uh, yeah, we have slight maybe issues with the way replay searches. So we've um, kind of, we're looking at integrating it with our own sort of heritage system, sort of exporting the data into that as well. So we can have you know, all the books, all the stream media, all in the same place. So the students don't have to look kind of everywhere to find that information. Um, we've obviously got, yeah, the Omni server. So we're getting that improved, um, you know, information for our, our EA. R E R A, but um, the one thing I've, I've noticed that the Omni server box doesn't do when it generates the metadata, it doesn't generate a the channel um, that the program's been dis um, was, was shown on, which I think you've got to actually have as part of the E R A, <coughs> and also it doesn't give you the date. It gives you the date for when it's been uploaded into you know your HTML, but it doesn't necessarily give you a date of the program because if you've had if there's a you know you've got a queue of programs, then it might actually be the next day you know, when that program goes through. So it's something we know the in the XML for the program, it's the information's there, but we might try to do something clever that we can kind of pull that information in together so it actually pulls that into the description. Um, we're in very uh, very interested in you know Camtasia Relay. You know it's really good for sort of staff you know recording their lessons. We've looked at other sort of, you know, capturing systems and stuff like that, and the kind of seamlessly it seems to work into, you know, our, our existing sort of video server seems to be a really big plus point. Um, and, you know, there's lots of staff members with um, with uh, iPads and iPhones and just having, you know, big button, you know, you can click, you know, there's not too far they can go wrong with that. And again, we want more staff to be uploading content into replay as well so we're kind of always continue promoting it and just kind of try to get it out there so we all know it's available and, and what it can do as I was saying a little bit earlier like the search for us is um, you know quite in a, is it, well it's a very important thing because we when you've got 10,000 <coughs> videos you know you can't say if you click in a TV recording that's arts and media you know, you've got 600 videos, you can't have people sort of scrolling through them just to find the program. And the search has become, it's become better definitely with the <coughs> update. It's definitely become better. But um, with, I don't know if any of you use Trill, it's kind of, um, they kind of catalog TV programs to give really good um, descriptions and metadata and stuff like that. But they have, in their search, they might have search for the program title, but be the exact phrase. So it just is very specific to that that program, or you know, it might be this word and this word. Whereas at the moment, when you search, um, say two words, it can kind of bring up quite a lot of different information, which might not necessarily be sort of that relevant to you. And yeah, when you've got ten thousand in it, it really, you know, it gets really important because it's quite, you know, that, that person might know the video's there, but it can very easily get lost. Um, yeah, the statistics. Um, for us, on, you know, on the home page, you know, it's it's good, it's nice, and it's good, it's clear, but they kind of need to be a bit more advanced for our needs. We looked at Sawmill, which works with the Helix um, server, but that's kind of it wasn't generating the stats necessarily that we wanted to. And obviously, um, as me as the admin, we've added seven thousand videos, 
So when you see other staff members compared to it, I think there's like, like a little graph, you know, up, we're up here, the next one's, you know, right down the bottom, and it's kind of, it's not clear, of, you know, what, what's, um, what's there. So yeah, having a function that you can actually remove the admin from those stats would actually kind of make it more valuable to us. Um, I'm just trying to remember the home page control. I'll leave the home page on because that's gone out of my mind. Um, we were kind of interested in maybe having categories, say, for staff members who have, you know, recorded, um, you know, students, um, you know, maybe for like their orals or something like that, and they don't want to share all those um, videos with their whole faculty, which could be their, the, the um, you know, their category. We, w we were kind of interested to know: is there going to be a way that they could just upload, say, to their own sort of own p profile? and actually not allow anyone else to see that because then they've got control of that and they can decide who they, they show that to and who that works with, which which would work really well with us because we've got, the way we've got it set up at the moment, we've got say, a category and that's, you know, um, everyone can see that when they log into Replay and we've got a category and it's hidden, which only the staff members you know log into, but all the staff members can see that kind of material and actually maybe staff member who might just want something you know, specific to them and they might not want everyone else to see that. So that's something that would be quite useful for us. Oh, actually, I just, just remembered that. Right, let's come back to me. The home page um, controls display of content. Um, as I was saying, you know, with the sort of most viewed thing, it'd be quite nice to be able to have, you know, maybe you could turn off the most viewed video, like the, that section, that bar at the top. So. Or then maybe, you know, if there was you know, some sort of like an interesting series or if it was, uh, say, The Apprentice, you might, could you have a category where you could choose which videos you uploaded to, so you'd have just four, that, you know, actually these are really worth watching, you know. Um, playlist, yeah, this, this is one, you know, it's available in YouTube. Um, but I know they've got endless amounts of money to be developing. But um, the playlist, being able to sort of share playlists, you can create your own playlist in Replay, which is really, you know, it's really nice. But, you know, your, sh your playlist might, sh might be relevant to someone else, but you can't share that with them. I think I'm, I'm right saying, aren't I? You can't actually do that at the moment. And that's actually, you know, you could just have one set up for your course and then lecturers can kind of dip in, dip in and out of that. And that's, you know, would be, again, really useful. Or, you know, say if there was, um, you know, you know, there, there might be sort of like, we've got like a gym and maybe they've made like a playlist of, of you know, personal music or something like that. And they could actually, you know, share that playlist for playing songs or something, you know, like that we could all kind of use that. Um, this, I mean, this one was kind of interested, uh, interesting to us, again, with that kind of example of if you've got an audio CD, you know, you, some of these language CDs have 35 tracks and you know, uploading one at a time is quite a sort of slow process for, um, you know, for a, a lecturer, you know, with obviously, you know, they're very busy. So, you know, it's a, it's a long process. So we were kind of thinking, well, you know, would there be a function where the user could actually upload, <coughs> I don't know, potentially maybe a folder or, you know, select, you know, all audio tracks in a, know in a folder and then they can upload those all at the same time and you know give it give it this sort of unique tag so it always comes up for them like quite clearly and uh, this one the admin um i've obviously add, added a lot and um say the seven thousand if it's uh, this and say it was maybe five years ago so, uh, i've streamed something for an art lecturer but they want to add like uh, say chapters, they, c they, can, they can kind of add, um, they can in the comments they can add time, uh, key times and they can use that to jump to the section they want. But there's, an, uh, there's chapters on the right, which generate like thumbnails and looks a bit cleaner. As because they, they didn't upload the content, it was seen as uploaded by the admin, they can't add those chapters in that same, in that same way. So it'd be nice for me to be able to say, well, actually, you know, this lecture uploaded this content, so just change the kind of contributor so they can actually then have sort of the admin rights to that. 
And yeah, that's um, obviously Rich Coleman at uh, XC Coal um, AC UK. If you've got any questions or anything you want to ask me, or you know, kind of how we did stuff, you know, you feel free to email me. And yeah. <laughs> just, I'd just like to know when that's as that's been displayed. The one thing we were saying earlier that we did was the background image, um, which is this kind of you know the sort of swish, and that that actually extends if the page is bigger, that actually goes off the page, so it just kind of gives it a more rather than being boxed in, it kind of just kind of created a bit more of an open feel to it. Okay, this is, I think the microphone seems to get passed around. Yeah, I think that's just my, because the screen resolution I've had seen a certain way for this. Oh, yeah. So I think that's oh, no, that's, that's yeah. fine. Well, that's it's, it's giving you that option. You know, if yeah, it is yeah. a smaller screen, there, it's fine as well. Yeah, it looks great. Absolutely. Hi, Richard. Sue oh Bird yeah. from Henley College Coventry. I'm just interested in asking how far you've got with the uh, integration with Heritage. You know, they're taking your catalogue record across. Yeah, um, we, haven't, we haven't started doing that yet but we we've been very aware that you know something we needed to do and yeah we haven't actually started the process I mean I think it's a case of just exporting the d the, uh, the information from you know the back end of um, HTML but it's not something we've actually fully looked into the, the way we're going to run it yet we've actually got you know there was 5,000 well maybe 3,000 sort of videos uploaded f from 2005 that didn't have you know uh, metadata or there was metadata and it was in heritage and there's no they weren't combined at the time so there are videos in our system that don't have any metadata so that's an issue you know we need to kind of solve as well you know if it's going to be searchable we, it needs to have those tags and stuff as well but i think it's going to be one of those cases of getting as many people as possible to be able to add that information <coughs> Okay. Yeah, because the API that you chose is so much about information. Yeah. And you could, you could get uh, heritage reports for media labels. It's a bit of that a programming effort, but it would be a much cleaner way of doing it. Is that the that information yeah. you need would be up to date, I guess. That sounds that sounds good to us. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Peter Gordon, Warsaw Library. Yeah. Warsaw College, sorry. Um, have you managed to get the uh, Omni server to record radio programs? Uh, yeah, we have. Yeah. Okay, right. Um, and it was a fairly. Um, I think we just had to, because it wasn't set up to en enable some of the radio programs, but we just managed to. I think in the box we got the channels. You can just click onto the radio program to radio channels, bring them up, and then they seem to record. <laughs> okay. Um, when you got it, it seemed to be absolutely fine, yeah. Okay, because we've, we've tried it, and the, um, it doesn't record the um, radio programs in, a, in the format that the, uh, the, the Hulu Corp um, recognised. Um, I, th I thought we'd, we'd got it re recorded to them, but maybe we haven't. Yeah, it's Oh, right, okay. Yeah, let us know. Oh, right. Yeah. Maybe I have to check because I, I definitely I had I set a couple of recordings, but now maybe I need to go back and uh, just check to make sure they've gone through. Okay, oh, that's that's interesting. I think the issue, I think the issue is it, it, it outputs uh, an MP3 file or something, does it? Or yeah, it doesn't output what we're it's expecting. It's, it's not outputting something that you're encoded when yeah. we'll run with at the moment. The encoders just fail. It, it, it goes through okay. the process. It delivers it to me. Well, it might, in that case, then, I might have, you know, it's, it's not, you know, a long-term fix, but I might have actually then, because I've definitely got those programs there, so I might have actually saved them off as MP3, converted them to something else, and re-uploaded them in, the sa in that same file, so you get to keep the description and the date and stuff like that. Anything else? Shall I, <laughs> I go off? <laughs> So with the um, 
I mean, this is just stuff, I think it's stuff of general interest. I mean, th okay. there is some stuff here that from a product development point of view as well that's interesting and it'd be good to get a show of hands on some of these things as well. So what, what's, what's been the major uh, contributor to the success? Has, it, has there been a real ramping up after the TV recording stuff or, or was it always very well used even before that? I mean, I think for certain groups, I think a def for definitely the sports sort of faculty, yeah. actually the ability to upload their own content has been like, you know, a really sort of big major sort of player for, for them. Yeah. And kind of, you know, when they start using it more, that kind of, you know, the word spreads. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I think definitely the kind of, the feel of it, you know, it's a lot more user friendly than having the old list that we used to have. And it kind of allowed the user to see all the content we did have. And I don't think they were aware of that before. Right. Okay. But I think that made a huge difference, you know, because we do get people going, just clicking on the category, say they've got, you know, aren't, aren't medium 974. You know, we do get people click on that and actually just going through them, just yeah. picking bits out just because they didn't know we had that. Right. And I think that's kind of added to it, yeah. S great. So a lot of the stuff that you'd had on your slide, can you flip back to the slide where you, where you know, you've got your little blue boxes with the stuff <laughs> in them? Do you remember yeah, that slide? Yeah. So it's just just to kind of address some of these these things because I I think what X2 have done is great and a lot of this stuff is actually coming so they're a bit ahead of the curve oh really? actually. Okay. So the category headings we're actually going to uh, have subcategories. I mean we'll go through this later. The era license message um, we we are going to need to chat to quite a few people on the ins and outs of of doing that because I I think that's an important thing at the moment that is a bit it's a bit of a CSS hack isn't it getting it in yeah, there yeah, from what is, yeah. there. But I mean uh, that I mean that be fair for us you know works great you know it comes up on the videos that you know might have been generated by staff which the uh, license doesn't apply to but you know that's we're happy with that yeah um the look and feel you'll see the new look and feel later i mean it's 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 a big move on and then the useful link icons again that that's something that that we've addressed as well um the shareable playlist is, is a really good one. That's been asked a lot of times, and okay. I, I think that's got to be done. It's not going to get done in V2.5. Mm -hmm. um, the private content for sharing, that's probably one to, to go to the audience, actually, because at the moment, the way the media library works is all content, are, content is always permissioned on a group basis, always. There's, there's never a user sort of aspect to it. You're a user, you're a member of a group, that's yeah. it. I get asked this all the time. Can I just do it for this particular user or this particular yeah. linear relationship between these two people? Is that the type of thing you're talking about? Yeah, and I, 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 can, I think I know where you're going. They go, well, okay, if a student can upload or, you know, how do you control that as well? Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's obviously a difficult thing, but I think you have to use it sparingly, I think. I think it's more, it's also from the point of view of assessments as well. Because like once you start using VLEs and things like that, people are saying, well, yeah, I want this particular student to share, but then no one else to see yeah, it. And because they're kind of assessments that they're doing to just be seen by the, the yeah. teacher. So we kind of kind of got to figure a way out of doing that that's that separates it from the user and the group. Yeah, that, that's yeah, something we've had that kind of issue as well, you know, having those two, just those two unique viewers, basically, yeah. and how the best way to kind of do that and we haven't really had a good solution apart from there the isn't logging yeah. in and then the viewer next to them or just having a single user in an ad group which just isn't yeah. manageable it's just no. just not something that you can do okay um the other one as well just it's just a, a general question actually because i you know i've obviously been doing this donkey's years and i remember dealing with you on just helix server rather than yeah. hml What's the, di what's the difference in the demand? Because you use Sawmill to analyze the stats. Do you have any idea on the difference of playback of a streaming server that's just hidden content yeah. or HTML where you're saying people see more of it? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm just really interested. Yeah, well, to be fair, Sawmill, we, we, we didn't get along with and we couldn't really work out sort of accurate and useful Over stats time, from it. Yeah, yeah. We just, it. It wasn't particularly clear to us. Yeah. Um, but you know, there def there's definitely a lot more views of content yeah. using this like system, definitely. And I, I'm, I'm again, I do think it is that kind of you know, if you've got a visual, you know, you know the thumbnail, you know, it's something really yeah. simple. But that just having that visual sort of stimulus does make you want to kind of click stuff and just see what program is. Yeah. You know? yeah. 
you know, when, you know, when it comes up to those random ones that I you know just because I, I you know at, on a daily basis, I go, oh, I've never seen that one before. Yeah. I'm kind of interested <laughs> to know what what it's about. And yeah, I think that I think that does you know make it a lot more sort of user friendly. Yeah, it's very interesting. Great. So uh, okay, I think that's yeah that's the end of of my questions. I, I think it's just really interesting on on the usage that that when I talk to people, they always say to me, yeah, because it's got the user interface, it gets used more for the upload, but the viewing uh, as well. Yeah. That, that's always the, the common theme throughout, really. That's great. <coughs> yeah, fantastic. Really happy yeah. getting on well with it. Is there any more questions? Does anyone else want the mic? No? All, all sorted. <laughs> <laughs> great. I think what we're going to do, because we've got... Uh, is there anything else you want to go through? No, that, no? that's it. Great. Yeah. Okay. I think what we're going to do, we're going to we're going to do Dave's one before lunch, because then what we can do, we can get obviously get away a little bit earlier then, because you know there's been a lot of people that said to me they don't really want to be hanging around here till uh, till five. So thanks very much, um, Rich, for doing that. Thank Fantastic. You.